Hello there, thanks for joining me again. I had a few spare moments, so I thought I'd put together some sort of video. I wasn't sure exactly what to talk about. So I thought I'd look at some of my weekly charts from the weekend and explain why I say what I say. Now you might remember that um, if you looked at the weekly charts this week, I was missing all of the futures charts and that was because I had a data issue with uh, Thomson Reuters um, and that's been resolved now and hopefully everything's back to normal. So this is the parent index, the S&P ASX 200 or the XJO and I wrote that it closed higher this week, volume reduced to a little below average which likely reflects the testing for supply which took place as price traded below the previous bar's low. Now, do you get that? The market at some point traded below the previous bar's low. And when it's doing that, it's generally testing for supply. And if supply is found to be low, price will normally push back up on a lack of supply. So volume was reduced this week, and volume was reduced most likely because when price was testing for supply during part of the week, supply was low and that's the reason price pushed higher in the end and closed above the previous bars high here and I wrote that suggested that selling pressure was low so when price came back and tested for supply selling pressure was found to be low and that's why volume was a little bit lower than the previous bar and in response to that lower selling pressure a small amount of buying pressure was able to push price up and close slightly higher. Price is traded in the relative safety which is found inside the range of the widespread down bar from three weeks back, arrowed. Obviously that's this bar. When price pushes down like this, it takes out all the buyers as price moves lower. So for a period of time, within this whole area, the range of this bar, buying pressure is low. So when price swept lower on this bar, all of the buyers were taken out as the sellers pushed price down. This leaves a vacuum inside of the range of this bar. It's only temporary, but a small amount of buying pressure in this case can carry price higher. So you can see here that price has floated up on, if you look down here, on reduced volume. Inside this range, here to here, for a relatively short period of time, is an area of safety. There's not much buying and selling in that area. It was all taken out as price swept lower and it needs to rebuild inside that range. And you'll see that quite often, that happens a lot when a widespread down bar finds a little support at the bottom and then relatively light volume can carry price higher. You always need to be a little bit careful because it's soft trading, it's a lower volume trading. It doesn't have a lot of commitment to the buying, so you just need to be careful. The really decisive area would be a break above this level or a break below this level because within the range of this bar, at least temporarily, there's a bit of a vacuum in the market. It makes things um, a little less committed, a little, little less intent has been shown by the market. So if the market did this, and pushed above this level, that would be showing some intent, especially if it did so on an increase in volume, but not excessive, just a good increase in volume, and with increased spread, with a high close, that would be showing intent. And same with if the market did this, where it closed below the low of the previous down bar, 
if this was on an increase in volume, not excessive, just an increase in volume above average, with an increased spread closing below the previous bar's low, that would be the market showing intent again. But any trading within this zone here should just be taken with a grain of salt for now because at least for the next period of time there's a bit of a vacuum in this area and the market doesn't need to show a great deal of intent for it to trade inside the range of this bar. Okay, next one. Small ordinaries sector. Price closed higher again this week and potentially above the older breakdown line. This is a bit messy, this chart. It's hard to get an eye exactly where the break, breakdown line should be placed. I think I'll place it fairly well. It could be there. It could be here. It could even be here. But you get the idea. It's around about that area there. And that's why I said potentially because depending on where you choose to place the breakdown line or where subsequent trading suggests it is, is um, whether it actually has closed above that line or not. After a bit of study of this and the daily chart, I thought that 35.20 was most likely where the breakdown line was and price did close back above it this week. This was a fairly positive response, especially on above average volume. Now, volume was reduced, but it was still above average. This is what you want to see. This is um, more decisive trading. You don't want excessive volume because then you could be concerned whether it was full of selling if it's an up bar or full of buying when it's a down bar. But just above average suggests the market was really committed to what it was doing. And that's what I said next, which suggests the market was committed and showing intent. So yes, I agree with that. And that market is higher this week, at least so far. The financial sector. Now you can see little narrow spread down bar. The financial sector spent the week in consolidation mode, attempting to solidify the gains made the previous week. This was the previous week. Price pushed up to nearly the highs of the range. Spread narrowed considerably as the market tested for supply. A weekly test is a fairly strong indication generally because markets rarely test for a whole week. So you don't get very many tests on the weekly chart, not clear ones like this. And I know that the market so far is looking like this at the moment. So you've had the response that was expected. Spread narrowed considerably as the market tested for supply. Volume was about average, which is what you want to see. Not below average because that suggests the market wasn't committed and not excessively high because that can confuse the issue and the opposite can often be happening. And combined with the narrow spread suggests that any supply that was drawn out was comfortably absorbed by the market. So any sellers that were selling into the market were bought very quickly and easily and comfortably and that's why the spread remained narrow. If the market was struggling to buy the supply that was drawn out, the bar would have been wider and probably closed lower, but it didn't do that. And if the supply was overwhelming, it may have pushed right down like this and broken down, but it didn't do that either. It was a very narrow spread, and the narrow spread suggests that the buyers were there, ready to buy and comfortably absorbed the selling pressure that was drawn out in the market for the week, and that kept spread narrow. So if the buyers were happy to absorb supply, then it's likely ready to make a challenge to the highs of this range which is effectively the breakout line. And so far it's trading above it, but we're only three days into the five day week, so anything can still happen. It's looking positive so far. Price appears well placed 
to issue a challenge to the breakout line above when trading conditions are considered favourable. And trading conditions have been fairly reasonable this week and price is issuing a challenge to the breakout line above. So that's all good. Metals and mining. I generally use this chart instead of the materials chart because the materials chart includes stuff that isn't mining and I'm trying to cover the miners. There was some modest support drawn out down here and that's allowed price to come up like this and now sits level with this line. But this isn't the important level. This is the important level. So the metals and mining sector closed high this week. Spread and volume were about average. The close was firm. When I say that, it's up near the high of the bar. There is little doubt that some modest buying support has entered the market. Yep, that's right. And it is only modest. You can see that volumes weren't particularly high and there's been no decisive action, but some modest buying support has come into the market in combination with a reduction in selling pressure. Yep, that's right. The more serious level is arrowed above. That's this level. This is where price broke down here after some buying support came in here. And it was under pressure, but it still came in and then price broke down. If price can get back above this level successfully, then that would actually be a quite a decisive move and that would be the market showing some intent to go higher. A successful challenge to that level would be quite significant. Yep, that's right, I agree. The ASX gold sector accelerated high this week on average volume. That's what you want to see. That means there was an increased spread. When I say it accelerated higher, that means there was an up bar the previous week and this week has increased spread, so it accelerated. Selling pressure was not overwhelming despite price trading adjacent to older congestions to the left. Here's the older congestion to the left, which would often be selling into any demand as price came up level with it. What that means is that as price moved lower, anyone that was holding in here probably already sold out. They were traders and they weren't holding on to wait for price to come back so they could get out for break even over here. They were selling as price broke down here and there wasn't anywhere near the supply you would normally expect on the average chart waiting here to sell into demand as price pushed back up. That's why that bar could push up with relative ease. The past two weeks trading helps to confirm the buying support which emerged three weeks back. That was here. You, can, you can't miss it. Look at this increase in volume. It was well above average, but not excessive. This is like excessive, but that was um, options expiry week. That would be excessive. If it was like that, you'd really want to see the response before you decided what was going on. This is above average. This is excessive. So you wait and see, because it can be confusing. Sometimes the opposite's happening when the volume's excessive. Yes, buying support likely came in here. Price traded right down to here, but recovered to close up near the high of the bar. Next bar was up. Volume was high. That had to be buying coming in. And you've seen the response since. Prices moved higher. So yes, buying support came in. I expect price will spend some time in consolidation mode when this momentum begins to ease, attempting to solidify the gains made this week. Yep, and that's exactly what's happened so far. This week's bar looks like this so far, which is like a test for supply, um, a consolidation bar. When price makes significant gains in a relatively short period of time, it always draws out some supply, some profit takers who bought down the bottom here, some shorters who think it's not going to be able to get past this and want price to come back lower. So this is all the supply that's drawn out when any market makes sharp gains. And this is consolidation mode. That's exactly what's happened so far, three days into a five-day week. Energy. Energy's been making some massive gains lately. Once again, when price makes lots of gains, at some point 
you need a period of consolidation. After four weeks of strong volume and equally strong gains, the ASX energy sector ran out of puff this week and unsurprisingly could not sustain further gains. Exactly. Volume reduced to average and spread reduced considerably. The close was poor down near the week's low. Yep. That's here. I anticipate the market will move into some form of consolidation mode and attempt to solidify the recent gains. There's been some pretty serious gains made in this market and a period of consolidation to solidify the gains is exactly what you would normally expect. It doesn't always happen, but that's what you would expect. Watch for the depth and duration of the response as it will help to judge the underlying strength of the market. I do this all the time. A shallow pullback and then a push higher again in response suggests the market's really strong. If the market has to consolidate right down like this before it can develop some strength again, it's much weaker. The longer it takes to consolidate, the weaker it is. The deeper it has to go to consolidate, the weaker it is. Doesn't mean it's weak, just means it's weaker. And if it's a shallow pullback and it takes a relatively short period of time and then the market pushes away again, you know that it's really strong. There's heaps more demand in the market than supply. And demand has overwhelmed the supply and prices continued higher. So always look at the depth and duration of the response to a, a large gain. Large gains always draw out profit takers who bought down the bottom, shorters who are selling into the price above thinking it can't go this high, it's got to pull back somewhat. And also it's letting out people who are stuck in old trades, it lets out the stale supply from the left and they can often be selling into the demand as well. And that's why markets have to consolidate. You've got the profit takers, you've got the shorters, and you've got stale supply to the left that will sell into the demand. Because these people, they bought, price went down, and it's a natural human instinct not to make a loss. So you hold on. I don't advise holding on sometimes, depending what your time frame of trading is, but lots of people hold on and they say, when price comes back to my level, I'll get out for break even. And that's why, that's why markets do all of this. They're trying to shake out these people so that they're not there anymore. And then when price does break out, there's not too much supply that needs to be absorbed. That's why breakouts fail. They push out and then there's too much supply to the left, too many sellers coming in and price has to retreat back to the safety underneath the breakout line. So that's what happens in the market. And we look at the depth and duration of the response to help judge the underlying strength in the market. And healthcare, in response to the buying support, which emerged in the previous bar, the ASX healthcare sector closed higher this week. Here's where the buying support came in. There was an increase of volume up to average. So there was a fair bit of commitment in the buying. Now, this is one of those ones where you have to think the opposite. If all of that increase in volume was selling, then you would have expected price to move lower with a reasonable spread. Look how much volume was on the previous bar and look at the damage that was done. Price went from here to here, that's a really wide spread on slightly below average volume. The next week, volume was even higher and up to average, so it suggests there was commitment in the market. You would expect that the spread would be at least as wide as the previous bar if it was all selling and there was hardly any demand in the market. But what actually happened? Price closed pretty much level with the previous close. It did trade below the previous bar's low, but it recovered. It didn't continue lower. It recovered and it closed level. That suggests that buying support came in. It's hard to tell and you have to think opposites on this one. You always look for the next bar's response to confirm and you can see what happened on the next bar. The next bar has traded below the previous bar's low. Obviously found 
uh, below average selling pressure because volume was lower this week, testing for supply effectively, and that's why volume was likely below average this week because there was very little supply drawn out as price traded below the previous bar's close. And in response, price just popped up on relatively light volume this week. And that's pretty much what's happened. I think this market's testing for supply again, maybe slightly up, but it's testing for supply again so far this week. So this is some form of accumulation that's going on here at the moment. Last chart, the industrials. Now the industrials tested for supply on below average volume. What did I say? The ASX industrial sector closed a little lower this week. Selling pressure reduced as price tested the lows of the sideways trading range. Here's the lows of the sideways trading range. And yes, it did trade just below it to recover back above it again. Understandably spread narrowed as the volume reduced. If supply remains low, I expect an attempt to rise in response, especially if trading conditions are favourable. And that's pretty much what's happened this week. Price is trading like this at the moment, three days into the five days trading. So you've had a positive response and that's in some way helping to confirm the lack of selling pressure and the rejection of a breakdown bar. If market wanted to break down, it had the opportunity last week. Price traded below the lows of the range. It could have broken down, but it didn't. It recovered and it closed back above the, the lows of the range. And this week it's gone up. So sufficient support has come in at this point to stabilize the market. And we'll have to see if that continues into the future. But at this point in time, there was sufficient support in the market to satisfy the sellers and push price a little bit higher once the sellers were absorbed. So that was last week's weekly charts. We run through them. You can see why I say what I say and understand maybe a bit more clearly what I'm getting at when I say this stuff. Some people might wonder why my writing is so big and I increased the size because some people said that they they looked at these charts on their phone and the writing needed to be big enough to be able to be read on their smartphone. Anyway, hopefully that was interesting. Leave any questions for me down in the comments. Thanks for your time again. See ya.